user Corsetta Penris Setnacht, also called Setnacht or Sethnacht, was the first pharaoh, 1189 BC 1186 BC, of the 20th dynasty of the New Kingdom of Egypt and the father of Ramesses III. Setnacht was not the son, brother, or a direct descendant of either Tuz Red or Merneptah Sipta, the immediately preceding two pharaohs, nor that of Sipta's predecessor Seti II, whom Setnacht formally considered the last legitimate ruler. It is possible that he was a usurper who seized the throne during a time of crisis and political unrest, or he could have been a member of a minor line of the Ramesside royal family who emerged as pharaoh. Senacti married Tai Maranese, perhaps a daughter of Mernepta. A connection between Setnacht's successors and the preceding 19th dynasty is suggested by the fact that one of Ramesses II's children also bore this name and that similar names are shared by Setnacht's descendants such as Ramesses, Amun Herkepchef, Sef Herkepchef, and Montnu Herkepchef. Setnacht was originally believed to have enjoyed a reign of only two years based upon his year two elephantine stela but his third regnal year is now attested in inscription number 271 on Mount Sinai. If his theoretical accession date is assumed to be Tushima 10, based on the date of his elephantine stela, Setnacht would have ruled Egypt for at least two years and eleven months before he died, or nearly three full years. This date is only three months removed from Tisrit's highest known date of year 8, 3 per 8 5, and is based upon a calculation of Ramesses III's known accession date of Ishima 26. Peter Clayton also assigned Setnacht a reign of three years in his 1994 book on the Egyptian pharaohs. In a mid-January 2007 issue of the Egyptian weekly Al Aram, however, Egyptian antiquity officials announced that a recently discovered and well-preserved quartz stela belonging to the high priest of Amun Bakinkansu was explicitly dated to year four of Setnacht's reign. The Al Aram article notes that this data contradicts the official record, which says Setnacht ruled Egypt for only three years. According to the new information provided by the stela, Setnacht's reign certainly lasted for four years, and may have continued for a little longer. Zahi Hamas, the former Secretary General of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities, declared the discovery to be one of the most important finds of 2006 because it adjusts the history of the 20th dynasty and reveals more about the life of Bakemkansu. As Setnacht's reign was short, he may have come to the throne fairly late in life. However, the Alarum figure does not change the fact that Setnacht likely truly ruled Egypt for only three, rather than four, full years since there are no year one dates attested for him, and his famous year two elephantine steel estates that Setnacht finally secured his kingship after defeating all his opponents and challengers to the throne in his second year. The date of the elephantine steel in year two to Shima day 10 of Setnacht's reign, the date of which is mentioned only halfway in the steel rather than at its start, is immediately followed by this proclamation, there were no opponents against His Majesty, LPH, in all the lands. This reference to the defeat of Setnacht's enemies implies that this specific date marked the termination of a conflict, presumably Setnacht's struggle for the throne, which extended partly into his second year and means that Setnacht's first year would have overlapped with Tisrit's final year, if Tuzret was his opponent. Therefore, he likely did not even rule Egypt in his theoretical first year and could only properly administer the country from some time during his second year. In any event, there was an interregnum lasting at least a year in which no ruler controlled all of Egypt and Setnacht's effective reign length should be reduced by a year from four to three years. Setnacht's elephantine stela touches on this chaotic period and refers explicitly to the expulsion of certain Asiatics, who fled Egypt, abandoning the gold which they had looted from Egyptian temples. It is uncertain the degree to which this inscription referred to contemporary events or rather repeated anti-Asiatic sentiment from the reign of Pharaoh Amos I Setnacht identified with the god Adam or Temu and built a temple to this god at Peradam, biblical Pitham. After his death, Setnacht was buried in KV-14 which was originally designed to be Tisrit's royal tomb. His mummy has never been identified with certainty, although the so-called mummy in the boat found in KV-35 was sometimes identified with him. An attribution rejected by Aidan Dotson, who rather believes the body belonged to a royal family member of Amenhotep II of the 18th dynasty. In any case, the mummy was destroyed in a looting in 1901, thus preventing any analysis on it. While Setnacht's reign was still comparatively brief, it was just long enough for him to stabilize the political situation in Egypt and establish his son, Ramesses III, as his successor to the throne of Egypt. The Bakemkin Sustil reveals that it was Setnacht who began the construction of a temple of Amunri in Karnak which was eventually completed by his son, Ramesses III. Setnacht also started work on a tomb, KV-11, in the Valley of the Kings, 
but stopped it when the tomb carvers accidentally broke into the tomb of the 19th dynasty pharaoh Amenmus. Setnacht then appropriated the tomb of Queen Tuzret, KV-14, his predecessor, for his own use. Setnacht's origins are unknown, and he may have been a commoner, although many Egyptologists believe he was related to the previous dynasty, the 19th, through his mother and may thus have been a grandson of Ramesses II. Setnacht's son and successor, Ramesses III, is regarded as the last great king of the New Kingdom. The beginning of the Great Harris Papyrus or Papyrus Harrisite, which documents the reign of Ramesses III, provides some details about Setnacht's rise to power. An excerpt of James Henry Breast's 1906 translation of this document is provided below. The land of Egypt was overthrown from without, and every man was thrown out at his right, they had no chief mouth for many years formerly until other times. The land of Egypt was in the hands of chiefs and of rulers of towns, one slew his neighbor, great and small. Other times having come after it, with empty years, Ursu, a self-made man, a certain Syrian, Karu, was with them as chief, W.R. He set plundering there, i.e., the people's, possessions. They made gods like men, and no offerings were presented in the temples. But when the gods inclined themselves to peace, to set the land in its rights according to its accustomed manner, they established their son, who came forth from their limbs, to be ruler, LPH, of every land, upon their great throne, user Corset Apanra Marayamun, LPH, the son of Re, Setnak Marayar Marayamun, LPH. He was kept reset, when he is enraged, he set in order the entire land which had been rebellious, he slew the rebels who were in the land of Egypt, he cleansed the great throne of Egypt, he was ruler of the two lands, on the throne of Adam. He gave ready faces to those who had been turned away. Every man knew his brother who had been walled in. He established the temples in possession of divine offerings, to offer to the gods according to their customary stipulations. Until 2000, Chancellor Bay was considered the only plausible candidate for this Ursu. However, an IFA Oastrakhan number 1864 found at Dar el Medina dated to year 5 records that Pharaoh, Sipta, LPH has killed the great enemy, Bath. Because Chancellor Bay died at least three years before this Ursu, he can no longer be considered a plausible candidate for this historical figure. James H. Breasted, Ancient Records of Egypt, Vol. 04, 1906. Eric Hornung, Undersechungenzur Chronology und die Genuen Reichs, 1964. J. Don Beckerath, Chronology der Pharaonischen Ägypten, Philip von Zabern, Mainz. 1997, pages 94 to 98, and pages 201 to 202.